Okay guys, in this video lesson, what we're gonna do is talk about whether or not a reaction is gonna happen naturally, or another way of saying that, whether or not a reaction is gonna happen spontaneously, okay? To do that, we need to talk about something called free energy. And free energy basically is the combination of things like enthalpy, entropy, and other factors that can give us an overall picture of whether or not a reaction is going to release energy overall or have to absorb energy overall. Now we know that all reactions require some energy input to get them started. So even if you're spontaneous, that input energy is still necessary. Um, but what we're looking at now is actually more that net change. So the net result of that reaction running, is it absorbing energy or is it releasing energy, okay? So if you have a spontaneous reaction, that means it's gonna happen naturally. So you put two things together, they'll react at whatever temperature you happen to be at, okay? They'll end up being product favored, and that means they're gonna release energy overall. So the net change will be a release of energy, okay? If we have a non-spontaneous reaction, that means it's not gonna favor product production, and it won't occur naturally. That doesn't mean we can't make it happen, it just means it's not gonna happen on its own. There are things that we can do to push energy to it to force it to happen. Okay, because for this to happen, it has to absorb an overall amount of free energy okay, or usable energy for us. So those are our two options. All right. Now, the other thing we need to th factor in is that most chemical reactions are actually at equilibriums. Okay? And I know we haven't really studied equilibriums in a lot of detail yet. Um, but when it comes to these equilibriums, one thing we need to just kind of keep in our mind is that all reactions, not, not, I'm sorry, not all, but most reactions, uh, have the ability to reverse on themselves. So you could have something like heat energy plus water plus carbon dioxide making glucose and oxygen, or you could run it the other direction where glucose and oxygen produce carbon dioxide and water and heat, okay? In all scenarios, one of these two directions, either the forward reaction, like we normally talk about it, or even the reverse of that could be spontaneous. And if one's spontaneous, the other is not spontaneous. So it's kind of like opposites of each other, okay? Now, in this case, which one is spontaneous? At first glance, you might say, I'm not really sure. There's no information about it, which is fair to say that. Uh, upon further inspection, though, if you take a look, you know, we have glucose and oxygen being put together. So basically, we have combustion here. And combustion reactions, we know, are spontaneous um, in terms of what they are. They do need activation energy, right? Just like all reactions need activation energy. But if you provide that activation energy, they will run and produce their products on their own, um, which is gonna be carbon dioxide and water. Now, this is also cellular respiration, right? So if you run it in reverse, we eat food or sugars, we breathe in oxygen, and we produce carbon dioxide and water, and we release energy as heat, which our bodies use to function, okay? So really, the reverse reaction here is spontaneous, whereas the forward reaction is actually non-spontaneous normally. But we know that plants do it, right? We know that plants use photosynthesis. So instead of using heat energy, plants use solar energy or sun energy, which provides them an, an energy source to run this process in reverse, making it spontaneous in that situation. It's not really spontaneous. It's more the fact that we're providing the energy needed to let it run in a non-spontaneous direction, okay? Now, as chemists, we can change things like temperature, pressure, and other variables to shift that as we go forward, okay? And that's what part of this unit we'll, we'll talk about and how we do that and what, what the results are of that, okay? This is the point where most times students start thinking, wait a minute, we've talked a lot about exothermic and endothermic, so is it, easy, is it as easy as thinking if it's exothermic, that means it's gonna release heat energy, so it must mean it's spontaneous? Or does that not necessarily hold true? Okay, and because I'm talking about it, you probably realize, yeah, it doesn't hold true, okay? Um, so it is not true that exothermic is always spontaneous, endothermic is always non-spontaneous. We have non-spontaneous um, exothermic reactions, and we have spontaneous endothermic reactions. In fact, we've done those in class already this year, where we've had several reactions that we've done for demonstrations that they react and they've gotten colder, so they have been spontaneous, but um, they were endothermic, okay? Which means enthalpy is not the only sheriff in town. So what's the other factor, okay? So that other factor is entropy. So enthalpy deals with kind of like heat energy and that kind of stuff. Entropy deals with all the other types of energies that are out there that, that correlate or co 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 correspond to disorder of a system, okay? So this is a little bit out there because it's a little bit more abstract, but... Um, in nature, 
the natural tendency of our world is to move towards disorder. Okay, it seems weird that we think we'd want to go to organization, but it's actually the opposite. Okay, now if you don't believe me, think of your bedrooms. All right, uh, there's very few teenagers who, without any energy input, the rooms stay perfectly clean at all times. Okay, I know mine didn't, mine still doesn't. Okay, um, I'm not a person who makes my bed. My wife, every single morning, okay, she gets up, she does her thing before she leaves the room. She goes in, puts energy in, and, and remakes our bed every single day. I haven't made a bed in 20 years um, because I more let entropy do its thing, okay, where I'm not going to put the energy in, so it's going to move towards disorder, all right? Things like that, too. Um, if you take a look at this, if we were to throw darts at a board, okay, um, or different po mo molecules that are bored, you would never think that those molecules would just stay in one little corner, okay? If someone were to drop a whole pile full of bricks off of the back of a truck, you would never think that they would land in perfect organized period, right? You'd, you'd assume it'd land like this, okay? So um, that's the, kind of what happens, all right? So in our world, things move towards disorder. Now, we put a lot of energy in to stop this, okay? That's what living really is, is we want, we put a ton of energy in to living systems, cell structures, organization, that kind of stuff, to maintain order. But eventually, everything that has been alive loses its fight to entropy, and eventually, everything does die, okay? And that's because we can't maintain that energy input and that, that good organization forever, eventually entropy wins out and disorder wins, okay? So that is our natural tendency. And that's, a came, that's the same thing down to the molecular level, is that if you, get, if you become more disordered, that is the spontaneous direction, okay? We've already talked about energy. We know we want low energy, but we also want high disorder, which is really weird to think of it that way. Um, we want things to be very unorganized, but low energy, and that's how molecules want to be, okay? Now, entropy does contribute to that thing. So when you look at free energy, there's really two things we look at. One is entropy and one is enthalpy, okay? Um, now, entropy, I should go back to that. Entropy we designate with an S, okay? Um, enthalpy, we know we had an H with those. So how do we determine if entropy is increasing or decreasing? So there are some simple rules we can use. Um, first one, gases are more disordered than liquids. Liquids are more disordered than solids. So if you're looking at a process and you have a bunch of solids turning into liquids, you are increasing entropy. If you look at a process and you're taking in gases and you're condensing them down into liquids, you are decreasing your entropy, okay? So when you look from your reactant side to your product side, do you see things going from solids into liquids, liquids into gases, or what do you see happening, okay? Now again, this is just one piece of the puzzle because you might see a gas turning into a solid and a solid turning into a liquid. So what kind of wins there? And that's why we have multiple things to look at, okay? Second thing, more particles, more entropy, all right? What I mean by that is if you take a look again at your reactant side versus your product side of a chemical reaction, if you have more particles or more, more amount of different substances, that's gonna be higher entropy, all right? So things like dissolving, especially for ionic compounds, because ionic compounds break into smaller and smaller particles. We've talked about that before. Um, things like dissolving will increase your entropy. Anytime you crush, break up, or physically separate things into smaller particles, uh, you also are increasing the entropy of that substance, okay? So um, increasing particles means more entropy. Now, this is the one that's not quite as easy to conceptualize, but if you see the you see my example here, I think it'll help you out. Entropy increases in reactions where more molecules or moles of product are formed. So in this reaction, we look over here, on our reactant side, we have two molecules of water. On the product side, we have two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. So the product side actually has three different molecules present versus the reactant side only has two. Well, the side with three has more entropy. So it would be favored that the water will turn into um, hydrogen and oxygen in this scenario because we're increasing entropy here, okay? Now, the higher the temperature something is, also the more entropy that it has, okay? That's a pretty easy one as you take a look at it, okay? 
Now, if it, all this stuff doesn't work out for you, the one big thing that you always remember is if you look at a system, ask yourself the question, is it becoming more organized or is it becoming less organized? And if you say it becomes less organized, that means entropy is increasing, right? Because entropy is disorder, okay? If it's becoming more organized, that means entropy is decreasing, okay, between those two things.